I am Christine Benedict and I lived in this farmhouse for 36 years with my husband and I raised two children here. Um, my um, daughter says the house is haunted, my son says it's not. The jury has been out for myself. Uh, I think the first 10 years that I lived here, I was scared to death. And every sound in the house has so many sounds, would, would just sound like something unearthly. And even the house has 14 rooms, and each room had those four pane window panes. And the slightest breeze would moan at a different pitch through every window. And I think that alone, that eerie sound, would just give you this, this ill at ease feeling walking in the house. And then also the, the house, it was built in 1875. And seeing that the lap, the lap boards inside the walls were plastered over a hundred years of shrinking and shriveling. At ungodly hours of the night, this plaster would trickle down into the walls. So, you know, the sounds in the house uh, were definitely like nothing I'd ever heard before. Um, I wrote a novel with this house, inspired by this house. And the novel is called Anonymous, it's a mystery thriller. The story is about a young woman who faces the fear of inheriting mental illness when her husband moves her into a hundred-year-old farmhouse where the neighbors insinuate it's haunted. Um, of course, this house was definitely the inspiration for the novel. And um, the second her part of the novel, too, is that her friend um, faces the fear of um, a stalker when perverted anonymous letters come in the mail and their stories merge as their friendship grows. All the letters in the novel are actual letters that my stalker sent me. So if you can imagine in the 80s myself living here um, with my husband of course and two small children where my husband worked very long days and I was surrounded by 53 acres of farmland as far as I could see and a stalker who was anonymous watching me, possibly in my windows, following me, knowing what I was doing and eating, where I was jogging. So it was quite a frightening time in my life. Uh, my name is Daniel uh, B. Campbell. I became associated with Vendix through my janitor at my high school. He was best friends with Bob, uh, Christine's husband. He got me the job with them and after about four or five months of working with them. Um, I was 18 and I had asked them, they had just moved out of this house, I actually helped them carry the boxes right next door, and I asked them if they were gonna sell it or rent it, and they said they were discussing renting it, and they said we couldn't think of anybody better. So that was in the 2012, October 27th, right before Halloween, because that was my first Halloween party I had. I had a roommate, uh, my friend Chris moved in here with me, and yeah, so I worked with them. We stayed here. Um, he helped me do the basement repair. We cleaned up the walls, washed them, and then sealed them so they wouldn't leak anymore. Um, supported the deck. Redid the floor in the uh, pool table room, the sun room, the heat room, I guess. And I think with those, that the theory of never finding out who he was all these different theories um, going through my mind um, basically turned it into a novel. I didn't start writing uh, until 2002 and even though I had all these stories that I wanted to, to piece together, uh, but I never gave myself that time, always too busy. My husband had broken his foot and he was um, stationary with a bell, an insistent bell. So I went up to the furthest room in the house and closed the door and said, I think I'm going to start writing now. <laughs> but it wasn't until my, both my children had uh, graduated from college that I went to college. So um, it was quite a um, learning experience, learning creative writing and running my husband's business. and. Um, different aspects of things in my life too, where it was very busy. But getting back to the house, um, 
the sounds in the house, it, it, no matter what room you're in, it would sound like someone was walking upstairs. There was a Chronicle reporter who did an interview in my basement with me about the book and the house, and she, it sounded like someone was walking upstairs. And she asked me if someone was here, and I said, no, it's just the house. Thus she writes horror from home. <laughs> the book isn't horror. <laughs> But it is, it's a bit of a scary story. Many things, you know, in the book, because it started out as a memoir, um, but then I've learned through Cleveland State University that it was okay to make things up and call it a fiction. <laughs> so there's a lot of truth to the, the fictional uh, version that, that I have written. So the, the house, when we first bought it, um, was in such ill repair that we had to go to seven banks before one would even give us a loan. There was a black list. This house was blacklisted at all the banks because they said anyone who got a loan would go bankrupt before they could fix it up because it needed so much money. And of course, you know, it needed a, the, the roof needed to be torn off and all those lightning rods. There were four, four lightning rods which were not even connected to the ground, were supposed to be. And the lightning um, was quite dangerous, you know, the lightning hit the lightning rods. And there's quite a chance you're taking. So we took those off and had my husband's a roofer and his brothers uh, helped him too. And the, the layers that they took off the roof were probably two inches thick. The bottom layer was wood. So the original house built in 1875 had a wooden roof on it. And you know, that's just really amazing. And then they uh, shingled on top of that a couple more times. So then when the lightning hit the house before we had owned it and made a huge hole in the roof, they more or less patched that area too. And um, you know, there was a lot of work, just in that, that facet alone. But the walls inside, and I know Mrs. White, bless her heart, she had six children and she worked, you know, all these jobs. Um, she did the best she could with the house. It, it just demanded so much. During the, the walls had 12 layers of wallpaper and they were cracked, like earthquake cracks from the ceiling, like three or feet, feet down and turn in like lightning cracks. So even if you tried to take off the wallpaper, they, we really couldn't save the walls. So instead of gutting the house, we uh, nailed drywall on top and leveled everything out and then um, put new molding on. So um, there was a lot of, lot of work. We worked on the house for a full month before we could move in because we only had a month left on our our rent for our, the house we were renting. So then we moved in and I remember just walking on the front porch there where there was plywood, you know, to keep you from falling into a, a rotted hole. And, um, you know, just coming in here and the house, we only lived, we're living in five rooms. And I had a two year old at the time and I, we moved in and I just cried. <laughs> I've had two roommates and one friend that stayed here for two weeks uh, in between them moving into their new apartment. Their lease wasn't done yet, so technically three, I suppose. Actually, both the people who stayed here for uh, it was longer than six months, they both had experienced something. Um, I didn't witness it, but they had said that they were felt restrained or couldn't move at one point. Um, it was from when they were waking up in the morning. And then the other time, uh, I don't know if I told you guys this before or not, because I had ran into him at the fair and he mentioned it, but he had said that he had saw a shadow of something look like a small person, maybe a little girl. And his girlfriend's mother actually came in here with, I think he said Sage after that point. And then he said that he hadn't saw anything after that. But again, I don't know, I don't associate with them anymore, so. I haven't had any experiences like that. I guess the only thing I've ever thought twice about was 
after I had talked to you guys and it was when I had gone in the basement and when it had flooded originally to plug in the sub pump again and before I even touched the wire it just started. So that was the only thing that I even thought twice about and that was after I discussed it with you. I've been asked if I've thought the house is haunted and there were times when I didn't and there were times when I did. Uh, once when I was in the basement, uh, the sub pump was just running nonstop because um, our water was from the shallow well and it was, was out of water and I was waiting for a, um, a, a load of water to come from the city. So the sub pump was just running and running and I had to unplug it. So I was in the basement standing on a chair and it was one of those big round old plugs that I think was probably uh, rusted into the, the outlet itself. So I stood on the chair and I just pulled and pulled and pulled and I finally jerked back with all my might and my whole chair just went backwards and stopped there and righted itself. And I stood there just shivering with I, the heebie-jeebies, just almost as though it wasn't real. Like, did I actually fall? And I'm only, you know, I, I'm only imagining this because I'm unconscious. <laughs> and there were also a um, couple times when my husband, I've been married for 41 years, and there was a couple times when my husband and I had what I'll call heated discussions. And each of those times, he fell down the entire flight of stairs. And each of those times he said he could have swore it felt like someone pushed him. Uh, the first experience where the restraining was uh, happened at, or told, I was told it was happened at, was where the lightning strike had struck that uh, part of the house, that bedroom. He was just laying in his bed and he just said that he couldn't, he felt like he couldn't move for, I don't know, he said a couple minutes, but it could have been exaggerated and shock. I'm not quite sure. What inspired me to write the book was all the unanswered questions about the house itself and about things in my personal life too. The house mainly, um, if the house was haunted or if it wasn't haunted. Um, and you know, the imagination can take you on different levels when you consider that it could be haunted. Um, the book, reflects the indecision that I felt living here, hearing things and things happening, um, wondering if it actually was haunted. There is um, schizophrenia in my family and there was a point where I was wondering if I was inheriting it because of the bizarre things that I would hear. And at one time it sounded like a dresser, a heavy dresser just fell over upstairs. A whole house shook. There's no dresser that fell. We went upstairs, nothing was out of place. And, or I went upstairs, I was by myself. And, you know, it was just one of those things where it really was therapeutic writing the book and putting all of those innuendos and thought, the thought process into a story, into a fictional story to um, develop those ideas of what if and to come to terms with them and make a, um, a really good suspense thriller out of finding the answers. And in my book, it's life or death. And not that in this house I ever felt as though it was life or death, but boy, in those early years when we moved here and my husband was out in an evening with his brothers, the kids were in bed and I was completely alone. I didn't want to be alone. <laughs> I felt there was something else here and it really scared me.
well. Sure we have our zip ties. Make sure that we don't use signal. Keep talking. Because that's what we use. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. We have that. Now, it's the second I walk out of that locker room um, on the other side, too. So. You can probably go which you think would be best. We gotta pull more out then. What's that? We gotta pull out more. Probably just go through the door then. I, I don't know. Whichever is easiest. You can still hear me? Okay. Okay, we can probably put it at the end of the laundry room here then. No, come on. Come back. That's good. Move okay. this way. Because it's got tipples on. Uh, Kind of yeah. Ambient temp? 86, even. Sir, uh, EMF? One milligauss. Humidity? 40, 50, 50 even. CO2? 817. Sound level, that's me. Everybody just quiet for a moment. I'm gonna do a sound stand over here to get maybe a tad bit more light from there. I'll just get the sound. I'll get the sound level already. Sound level with the fan. Okay, sound level with the fan. We don't have a recorder, but I'll make it Humidity? 50.7. CO2? 759. Okay. Okay, here we go. Watch your head. Watch the stairs. Are doing well. It's your fault, you know? <laughs> Correct. We are almost done. We're upstairs. We're just uh, doing bass lines. We just turned the air off up here so we can get some good sound readings. Um, probably be down in like 10 minutes. Okay, let's do sound level. It's like really quiet it's in quiet here. It's quiet in here. Mm -hmm. And it's comfortable in here. Mm -hmm. Could you give oh, us a temperature weird. decrease? That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, it would. Freeze me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd definitely be able to feel cold spots tonight. If there's someone here with us, can you can you come over into this room? And visit with us for a little bit. <clears throat> and the squeaking was me moving my foot on the floor. Okay. Hello? Is there someone here with us? I did actually hear something right after you said that, but I think it might have been out of effect. Can you, um, if that was you, can you do that again for us? I might be female, I don't know, it's just high pitch. Were, were you the one that was downstairs with me earlier? In the basement? Yeah, 
just felt that nudgy feeling on my hand again. Are you moving, Jess? It's my hand right now. Okay. Can you see it? Do that again. I am doing it. It's not what I heard. I had my hand down. That's not what I heard. And then I picked it up. Hold on, I heard something in there, in that room. Are you are you here with us? Is that you? Hello? What is keep happening? This is the third time this has happened. I know. Oh. Can you come in here, please, with us? I'm just gonna. Yeah, no. Right before you said you heard that on um, my hand, I felt like a. Did you? Mm -hmm. Since we have his camera, that camera. Um... I don't know if I'm it's on this side. Of me. Hello. Hello. Are you the one turning my camera on and off, or turning it off? Shall I say? Sorry, I have the one that's laughing there. See, I thought I heard that sound coming from like, it sounded like this, but a little more like rustly, like with, you know what I mean? Like if somebody had a long skirt on? Yes. That's what I heard. Yes. All right, hold on. What was the sound that you thought you'd heard? Again? It almost, it almost sounded like fabric. Like but a heavy wool rubbing. Like a heavy like wool rubbing. With a long skirt. But yeah, with like someone walking with like a long skirt of some sort. Like maybe actually, hold on. Like that. Almost like that. So if you move the winter curtain, does it make that sound? Hold on, let's be quiet for a moment. It's a lot louder than what I heard. Yeah. That's almost too heavy of a fabric. Can you tell us your name? Keep going. Your house is beautiful. Talking. How long have you lived here? Did you help build it? Can you come over? Can you come over here to, towards us? Or would you mind coming over to us? How many people lived in the house with you? Upstairs bedroom, 10.29 p.m. Saturday, July 23rd. Farmhouse investigation, so. Okay. What the hell? What? My flashlight just clicked, and look. Well. It switched to. It just clicked. I had it off. I set it down, and I heard a click, and I looked down, and I saw the ring of light around the bottom of it. Huh. Okay. Cool. Okay, utilizing some audio, full-spectrum camera, and a REM pod. They lost power. Yeah. Wow. Is everything else back up and running? Uh, everything else is up and running. Uh, still not getting your mic. Can you double check your mic?
it on, they get put on standby. How about now? How about now? You've got this device here in the center of the table by me. Now watch what I do when I move my hand by it. See? See that? All right. Let me go ahead and move back so I'll give you some room. And if you would like to do that, you go ahead and do that. Can you do that? Or you can turn my flashlight on again, or... Or there is another device here in the room, here on this center table here. It has a green light on it. And if you just touch it or go near it, you can make that change colors. Other, other lights will light up and it will change colors as well. So you're welcome to touch that as well. Come on, we need a name. We gave you our names. My name's Eric. I'm Lisa. Lisa, Scott's here with us. I'm Scott. And Gwen. Hi. How about one knock? How about some type of noise? Something so that we know that you are here listening to us. Well, we're nice guys, girls. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you again what your name is. Can you walk down the hallway? From the other room towards us. Come in here by us. Someone whisper? Somebody made a noise. No, did someone say my name? No. 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 Well, no for audio, I just heard my name. I'm going to walk down to that end and take a look, see what's down there uh, window wise. Okay. I'm going to take my recorder with me. There's a window back here, but it's largely covered with a black paper blind. And all it's showing back there is the garage where we have tech set up. And quite a bit, what I saw was quite a bit brighter than what's coming from tech. Okay, you guys were a witness to a four bars, right? Oh, Rainbow right. batteries? I'm down to three Can now. Can someone give me a big favor? Yeah. Can you run test me another mini DV tape? Yeah. Are they all in that bag? Yeah. Uh, I said I would, but I don't have flashlight. I'm probably going to need a light. Hmm. 
Anybody from the fish family here today? Is there any, we had a, a member of your family here today, your great granddaughter and your great great granddaughter. Is there anything that you would like to say to them? You can touch my hair again if you want. Remember the last time you gave permission, what happened? I know. I'm scratching my Whoa, back. I just got like super, super dizzy. Yeah, I had to go sit over here. Yeah, that's why I've been feeling that. I was off balance over there. What do you got? Um, something's happening to Jennifer here. She's having a... You all right? Don't fake. I've already done that. She's not all right. Can you sit down. Don't fall. Yeah. Don't smack your head either. You want me to take you upstairs, honey? <coughs> yeah, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Like, do you need a drink, or you just need to get out of here? This me walking. Come on, let me take you back to tech. Hold on. I'm like. Oh whoa. I'm putting my McCord down. You spiked. That was cool. Oh, God, Jen. Okay, well, whatever, whoever you are. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to grab my arm. <coughs> Man, I got chills really, really bad. Man. And I'm not sensitive either. You gave me the chills. Oh, boy. Jumpy, huh? And then all of a sudden I feel fine now? What the heck? Somebody healed you? No, it's like whatever was got me super dizzy and then touched me from like the back. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping when I just touched that. No, you're kind of jumping, again. you're telling me. It's just like my back. I put my hand out, she practically took it off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Tony, Jess, Jess, come here. Jess, you should come over here. Come it's okay. It's okay. I gotta get out of here. I can't. All right, let's go. Come on. Let me help you up. I just felt a breeze. Oh, I feel it. Out. It just got really kind of chilly. Hang on. Okay. Help her. I, I do. I feel it. Like it got noticeable. Like, like a feel, breeze feel, came through. Feel, feel in the temperature right here. Can you feel it? There's another breeze just came through. Sorry, I didn't really want to face plant. So I was standing about in this area right here, and I felt like something was kind of pulling on my hair. Um, it was more on this side, and um, definitely was not this. I was far away from this. And um, shortly after, there was witnesses that saw my hair kind of like, almost like pulsating. Um, obviously, I did not see that. But um, not too long afterwards, I got completely chilled down to the bone, freezing, like really, really cold, and started feeling like I was gonna black out and just drop to the ground. So, um, so we're gonna come down here and do another EVP session and see if we can maybe try to recreate some of the stuff that happened. You okay? All right, what I'm doing here is uh, Jennifer has been a bit concerned about the activity that's been going on down here. She's asked me to come down here and kind of uh, set down some ground rules with whatever the spirit is here. She doesn't want to be followed home. Uh, she doesn't want this kind of activity to continue. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to do a little bit of an EVP session, but mostly what we're going to be doing is just kind of setting things, um, laying down the law about what the spirit can and cannot do. So... All right, now, uh, whatever spirit is down here, 
Uh, we just want to set some ground rules here. Uh, Jennifer and some of the other girls that have been down here, you've been kind of picking on, you've been uh, making your presence known to them in particular, and we just need you to know that that is not appreciated, it's not a good thing, they do not like it, and you are not allowed to do that anymore. Um, there will be consequences if that is the case, if you continue to do that. This is your place down here. Nobody's disputing that. We will be leaving here in a little while. You can stay here. We're not going to eject you from here. But this is where you have to stay. You're not allowed to follow anybody home. You are not allowed to go along with anybody. You are not allowed to bother them while they are here. Now, with that understanding, we've got a couple questions that we want to ask right now. So first of all, tell us who, what your name is. Jennifer, Jessica, if you feel anything, let me know. Okay. What is your name? Why are you bothering the women in the group, particularly Jennifer? What is it that you want? Why are you bothering Jennifer and Jessica? Do they remind you of someone? Yeah, they moved. Yeah, they moved. Alright. So jump down here. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Something's yeah. touching my hand. Stop touching Jennifer yeah, now, I or I will hand. bind you three times. It's touching my hand right I feel like a spider web on my hand. Let her go Make sure now it's not a web. in the name of Michael the Archangel, in the name of Metatron. It's gone. I told you, you are not allowed to bother them. If you continue, I will eject you from this house. Do we understand each other? I heard that upstairs. It didn't sound like it was upstairs. I'm completely still. Okay. It did sound like it was upstairs. It did. There's an easy again. Make sure they're not making Can somebody use a bathroom or something? I don't think anybody will come in while we're doing this. Does anybody have a walkie? Yeah, I do. Is anybody in the house right now? So, you're here. We know that already. Tell us something that we don't know. I have a device over here. There's a little red light on it. You can talk into that device. We can play it back later and we can hear it. Are you bothering Jennifer again? You'd better not be. Good. Glad we have this understanding. Is your name Fish? Do you know the name White?
Was that you we heard upstairs walking around? Seriously? Well, the lights just changed from red to green. I didn't even south. touch it. That's pretty interesting. I that was cool. <laughs> what the That's heck? That's okay. You can touch the flashlight. Yeah, the flashlight's fine. That's interesting. I promise you, it's, I've been holding it like this the entire time. Yeah, no, it makes Eric's an audible sound when you switch it. Eric's flashlight turned down on its own also. It seems to like flashlights. Okay, I'm not even going to touch it this time. All right, are you still here with us then? <laughs> I'll take that as yes. Direct response to a question. All right, let's see if we can do... If you want to communicate this way, that's fine. I'd like to see you do that again, if you could, please. Change that light again. There's got to be something wrong with the mechanism in there. It wasn't even being touched, though. It wasn't moving. Well, not even can, you, can you get it to go from low? Hello. Is that you? No, it's no, not me. That's in the corner. And oh. it turned green again. Okay, I think well, I might something, be... Something moved over here in the corner. That did not move. There might be something actually to this flashlight, so we'll take that upstairs, but... Yep. Well, Just we want to finish out of up here. curiosity here. Yeah, I, I did that. It doesn't okay, no, the not the right sound. No, it sounds like a scraping sound. Yeah, like something back in here. Kind of like Kind of like that, actually. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. Make another noise like you did. Stomp on the floor. Or move something. Moving something is good. Move something. Besides us. Do not touch Jennifer or Jessica. You hear that? Yep. Yes, I did. Very cool. Very nice. Thank you. Can you do that one more time, just so we can make sure it was you? There it is. There it is again. All right. Thank you very much. There it is again. Yep. Would you like us to leave? Would you like us to stay? Do you need help? Did you hear yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Again, that same, it was more behind, like. I heard it was it was closer. Like, it was in that. Yeah, I didn't room. hear it that time. So. It was I heard lighter, it, but it, it was, was behind me. Yeah. Before we go, I want to reiterate you are not allowed to follow anyone in this group home. You are not allowed to follow Jennifer. You are not allowed to follow Jessica, me, Tony anyone else that's a part of this group this is your place or emily this is your place you can stay here you are not welcome elsewhere but with that understanding we will like we will now leave okay and thank you for your time and thank you very much for communicating with us The farmhouse uh, investigation was a, was a big challenge with uh, some of the obstacles that we had to, to deal with. Uh, one of the biggest really was uh, the basement area because we were, uh, we had to uh, go around the back side and then come through this sliding glass door and then go down and the steps were very narrow and we had this like ledge over top of our heads to where you would sort of go down and then duck down to get into the basement and if you didn't watch yourself and we're doing this with no light so that was one of the biggest worries was going down them steps and somebody
catching her head going down or coming up. When Jen and I were sitting in the laundry room, um, I felt a nudge against my hand and I'd kind of picked it up and made sure it wasn't you know, just tingly from how I had it sitting on the ground. Um, it really wasn't. Um, but what was so interesting about having that happen that night was that during a previous visit to the location, I'd been sitting in the same room and felt that same kind of nudge against my other arm. Um, but it's not a nudge like you feel like if somebody were to elbow you, but more like as if a cat took its head and kind of rubbed up against you. While we were doing our investigation of the upstairs bedroom area, we uh, got in there and got set up and about five minutes into the investigation, not even, I set my flashlight down on the table and I heard a distinct click. At that point I looked down and I could see the ring around the flashlight was lit up. It was very surprising to me because that flashlight has to be clicked. Another interesting thing that occurred when we were doing our investigation up in the bedroom is I was walking over toward the hallway uh, near the door entrance to the bedroom with a thermal imaging camera doing some thermal uh, video. As I approached the doorway, I heard my name called. So I turned around and I said, did anybody call my name? And everybody proceeded to tell me no. Later, during evidence review, we heard my name called. And it's pretty clear on the recording that it was my name. When I was in the living room, there was a, a rustling sound that I heard. It sounded like a dress, like an, like one of those old long dresses um, that was kind of like brushing up against the, the, the wall and the carpet. Um, and the only thing that I could come close to kind of recreating was there was a curtain. And the curtain, if you kind of rubbed it against the wall or rubbed it at all, it kind of made a very similar sound. When we were investigating in the living room, um, when I was talking to Kim and she was asking some questions, um, I turned around and looked towards the hallway area where um, the stairs to the basement are. And while Kim was talking, I started seeing shadow play over there. Um, and as she was talking more, the shadow play seemed to increase. So um, that's part of the reason why I told her just keep keep talking, keep talking to see if I could to see if it would get in and um, get more intense and it did. When we were downstairs in the cellar um, doing a doing an EVP session, um, I started feeling like somebody was kind of like lightly touching my hair sort of like this, but towards the back. And one of the other people, um, one of the other investigators had kind of said that they saw, they thought they saw my hair slightly like vibrating. Um, and throughout that entire time, um, I kept feeling like somebody was just constantly like touching my hair and it eventually just stopped. When we were all spread out across the basement, um, Jen started getting a lot of really strong feelings down there. And it was strange because I was completely on the opposite side of the basement from her and just got this really sickening, sinking feeling in my stomach. And I took a step towards her and it was she went down not even a second later. So I don't want to say it was preemptive of that happening, but I definitely had a bad feeling that something was going to happen and she did go down. Another very surprising find during evidence review was on the NVR system. The NVR is basically our network video recorder. It's the one that all the static cameras hang off of that is monitored from tech. When we were reviewing that, during the incident that occurred down in the cellar with Jennifer, there was a, uh, the camera shook violently. We're not quite sure how that happened because we looked at various angles from other cameras, other mini DV sources. There was no way anybody was near it when it occurred. Uh, it didn't look like the camera settled. It did look like something shook the entire tripod and fairly vigorously too. Well, when we were downstairs, um, I was, I had to sit down for a minute because I started feeling lightheaded and kind of dizzy, drained, like energy drained. So I, um, I sat down on the stairs just to kind of, I didn't want to fall or, or hit my head or anything like that. And 
we continued the EVP session and something felt like it grabbed me from behind. Now I've been like touched, I felt like I've been touched before, things like that. This, it felt like somebody physically pushed their hand out underneath the stairs and like grabbed my back. And um, I just, I jumped because it was intense, so. In addition, um, when I did, when I, as I was getting up, um, Jessica had touched me on the head and I think she thought at that moment in time that she is the one who startled me when in fact it was actually the, the, the grab behind my back that startled me before she had touched my head. Jennifer came to me after one of her sessions downstairs because she was somewhat upset over some of the activity that had been centering around her while she was down there. She had been touched several times and was feeling very, very uncomfortable about being alone in the cellar. She came to me I, because I am more or less the group's occultist for lack of a better term. When we're called upon to do cleansings or otherwise deal with unruly spirits or entities, they usually call on me to do that. In this case, she wanted me to come down there with her because she was frightened and wanted me to kind of back her up with some of that knowledge that I have. There were some really interesting things that happened with the flashlight in the cellar um, that um, actually I was using this flashlight all night and didn't encounter any issues until we actually got down into the cellar. Jennifer was using the flashlight in the cellar. She, this flashlight she uses has a well, the standard white beam, but it also has a red and a green filter that can be triggered mechanically by the button on the flashlight itself. While she was holding it, she had it on red because red helps preserve your night vision. While we were talking down in the cellar and trying to get a response, suddenly without her touching the button on the flashlight, it shifted the green filter. At one point in time, um, we had a pipe that was sitting right in front of me, and it was kind of leaned up against the furnace, and I had been looking in its general direction, and I kind of looked away for a moment, and we just heard this like incredible f crash sound almost. And I looked back down, and the pipe had completely twisted where it was sitting at. There was nobody within reaching distance of this, not even close to it. At another point in time during the night, while we were all standing down there, we started hearing kind of thuds and knocks um, throughout the house. We thought somebody might have come into the um, into the house, but when we called up to tech, nobody had. Um, so it's still kind of a mystery as to what that was, but some of them actually seemed to be in response to what we were asking. Um, the other big noise of the night was while we were in the same location, we heard what sounded like a metal like scrape and clunk. And it came from a corner that had nobody in it of that basement. Um, a couple of the members had kind of looked around and couldn't really find anything. Um, but as they were heading up, a couple more of us went over and looked around that same area where we'd heard the sound. And what we found was actually like a spray paint type can um, next to a couple of cinder blocks. And we found that if we dragged it or bumped, like tapped it on the ground, like if you kind of picked it up and dropped it or tapped it against the cinder blocks, um, it made the exact same sound. So whether it was against the floor or the cinder blocks over there is still a mystery, but it definitely came from that can. My final thoughts on the investigation are that it was an honor to be able to investigate this house which inspired the book Anonymous. It really set the ambiance for the evening and it really helped us correlate some of the events that Christine wrote about in her book to the uh, investigation that we did.